Emily Berry here from Praiseon Media. Today we're going to talk about project cost management. I have a question for you. Do you have confidence reporting on your project budget? Maybe not a project budget, program budget, department budget. Do you have confidence reporting on your budget? For example, if at any point in time someone walked up to you and said, hey, how much more money are we going to spend? How much more work is left to complete before the end of this project? Uh, are we over budget? By how much? What percent are we off by our budget? Or, hey, do we need to make any change requests now, partway through this project, to make sure that we're able to complete this project under budget? Could you answer all these questions? If you feel like you want to, but you don't have all the information necessarily, necessarily gathered, or you have the information, you just don't simply know what to do with it, then we're going to answer and help you out with the next couple videos that we have here. So really, there are three key components of managing cost in projects or a department. I'm going to say project, but it could be anything where you are working with costs and you're spending money for work. So the three components are estimating costs. That sounds pretty uh, small, right? Of course you estimate costs. But the idea is you have to really dig into and understand what work is being done in order to estimate those costs. What is the scope of work is what we say in the project management world. Um, for others in operations, you might be thinking, well, how many resources and how many hours and, and what is their pay rate? So estimating costs. Then determining the timeline for those costs is very important. Because the timeline has to do with when the money is coming in so that you know when to schedule the resources to complete the work so you can get it done by the agreed upon due date. And then keeping costs under control. There are all types of bumps in the road as you're going to work every day. And so if you're able to understand what is going to make or break your project or your year, then that helps you to be able to make the right decisions while still pleasing your stakeholders and also looking and being competent because you know where the money is going and how necessary it is <laughs> that you couldn't have done anything better in order to keep that under control. So in the PMP vocabulary, the Project Management Institute, the PMP Project Management Professional Exam, these are the processes that we have in the framework. It's estimate costs, determine budget, and monitor and control costs. This is what they call them in the PMBOK 5th edition. So estimating costs means that you're actually saying, well, how much, how much money am I going to spend? In, in the PMP world, we break down our scope of work into a work breakdown structure that has work packages, and we break those work packages down into activities in the non-PMP world, you might simply open up Microsoft Project and type in the activities and the resources that you need and their pay rate in a, an environment that's totally not project-based. You might just actually have past budgets or uh, performance reports from the past that indicate how much you, you normally spend. So we, we look at past data. Uh, sometimes past data is wrong, by the way, because prices go up. Uh, parameters is where you literally say, how many hours do I need this resource, people, materials, equipment, facilities? How many hours? How many resources? What's their wage? This is called a parametric estimate. It might be very accurate because you've already had a handshake on the wage and how many hours, and, and you know this is really the estimate for it. Or it might be pretty murky because you're not quite sure about how many hours you need. You might have very confident estimates because you've got a contract signed with a supplier for some work or some materials. Uh, or you might be pretty close to being accurate because there are some vendor bids out there and you know the general um, area of how much it will cost you. But risk reserves, a lot of us don't know how to analyze what could go wrong and how much that risk will actually cost our project. Now, there are um, all sorts of different tools and techniques that you can do to quantitatively analyze um, what you, how likely it is that that risk will happen, and then if it does happen, 
what you should pay to respond to that risk. That's a, that's a discipline that's very important, risk reserves. We're not going to go into that right now. Uh, but I want you to do this. Anytime you estimate costs, to think well, what could go wrong and how much is that going to hap cost me and how likely is that to happen. At a minimum, you should be looking at the, the risks that are coming your way, the threats to your project. Now, we take all this and we also think about, as we're estimating costs, uh, how confident am I in this estimate and what is the basis of the data? So you, you document the basis for your estimates so you know later on in the project, uh, ooh, no, I, I was like 20% sure about this estimate. Now I need to think about this a little bit more um, because that's opening up a, a large risk for a project or, oh, no, I'm very confident. I don't have to think about this anymore. So we take those estimated costs and the basis for those estimates and we determine the budget. The budget is going to be a formally authorized time-based expenditure of money. This is simply where you aggregate all those costs that you estimated and then you smooth those costs out against the funding. This is called funding limit reconciliation and in the project management world very often you have to meet a milestone before the funds come in and so that greatly affects the work that's done in the, in the schedule um, and the due date because you're looking at when the funds come in versus when you're spending the money on the work that will be done. And so we, we end up when we have our budget, our time phase budget, with this pretty little chart. This is simply the information in Excel in a line chart. We've got a 10-month project here and our budget is going up to six million dollars. So we see we spend the majority of our money here between February and July. This is the planned value in the earned value management world where we do calculations. The planned value is very often done work package by work package. Here we did it by month because it makes it easier to read and talk to people who don't know anything about your work packages. Hey, how much money are you going to spend in January? $500,000. Oh, OK. How much money are you going to spend up through the whole project? Oh, oh, that's $5,375,000. Our budget at completion, our BAC, is $5,375,000. And that includes all of our calculations from our planned value. All of these numbers, we aggregate them together. Now, each and every one of these numbers is a cost estimate and does include risk reserves. So our contingency reserves are built into our budget at completion. So if something does go wrong that we had identified and put money, we tucked a reserve into our budget, we, the project manager, have the authority to pay for that, generally speaking, in the PMP world, at least. So our budget at completion, a little over $5 million. We have our budget. Now we're working and we're spending the money and we're completing the work. So as a, a project manager, as a, any type of manager, we're gathering information. We're getting invoices. We're seeing, well, how much have we actually spent? What are our actual costs? And then we're also documenting what is the percent complete of the work. Are we 100% complete? Are we 20% complete? You don't always have to be spot on. Well, we are 18.5% complete. No, you just come up with some rules beforehand so that it's consistent and people know how to report on how much work has been complete. Controlling costs, and this is where you're actually saying, well, we've got some actual costs and we had a planned value for the work. How much work was, the wor was it actually worth versus how much did we spend? If there's a, a, a variance, <laughs> between what we planned for and what the actual is, and we have to think, is this going to continue? Was this just a bump in the road we can get back on track? Or, oh no, do we have to do something drastic? Or even better, hey, it's early on. I'm so glad that I'm able to do this monitoring and controlling of my project because I see very easily some things that we can do to get back on track. Sometimes that means that you're just simply determining, well, there's more work than money and, and we can smooth that out. Other times you realize, oh no, I need to make a change request, perhaps reduce the scope of the work or talk with leadership 
about what is actually happening there. But of course, if you have good information and you're tracking this, you're going to feel much more confident when you have that conversation with leadership regarding why you've spent more money than what was planned. And everybody likes predictability. When you're in the boardroom, when you're in the conference room, when you're in the office, people like predictability and information that indicates why there is an issue because that allows people to take the proper steps to solve that problem. So here we see this, this line chart. And two very, it's kind of like two charts put together here. The top chart is our budget, remember that blue line, with the cumulative costs. So we're working on our project, we're gathering information, we're putting the cost into our spreadsheet or into whatever type of project software that we have, and we can see right here that we're a little bit over budget, right? Because our cost, what we've paid, is more than what we budgeted. And it's July right now while we're reporting. Here, the bottom information is where we see our planned value, our earned value, and our actual cost. If you recall, our planned value was our estimated cost that, that went up. But here we actually see them on the yellow line. So look, our white line and our yellow line overlap up until today, today in July. Because our earned value, the white line, is how much the work was worth. So we planned in January for our work to be worth $500,000. We're 100% complete with January, so the value of the work that was done was $500,000. Regardless of how much we paid, our actual costs don't matter when we're looking at the earned value because we estimated this work is worth this much no matter what happens. That's why your estimates are so very important. But here, since today, is uh, July, we have a separation because we haven't done this work yet. All this yellow, this planned value, we haven't done. So we can see, of course, that our actual costs exceeded the value of the work. That's why here we have the differentiation in the budget. So what is the power of this right here? Well, the power is because we have gathered the right information, which we'll get to how to gather it and what formulas to use, you're able, at any point, we could have run this report back in March, at any point, you can run this report and you can show this and you can talk about the reasons why you have this difference and it also allows you to understand, oh, well, you know, uh, we, need to, we need to work on this a little bit. It's not totally bad because the majority of the work is complete, right? The majority of the work is complete. We still have our budget left. All that's left is to spend less than a million dollars each month, the, the rest of the three months that we have for this project. But really what's going to be asked of you, what you may have to report on, is what will the future be? How much more money are we going to need to spend to get to the end of this project? And do we estimate that when it's all said and done, we'll be over budget? That's where these come in our estimate to complete, ETC, and our estimate at completion, EAC, are calculated from the raw data that we'll be collecting in our spreadsheet and just throwing a formula in there and then just doing a chart, a line chart in Excel, we'll be able to see. We don't have that much to worry about, right? I know. There's a lot of numbers in between these tick marks of five million to six million dollars, but it's pretty close, it's pretty decent. Now you might be thinking, uh, I don't want to go into a report, I don't want to go into a, a leadership meeting talking about numbers and things that the rest of the people don't know, people don't understand earned value. Well, hopefully you've seen from these charts that when you create a chart and you show this information, then people are able to, to just visually understand it. And they're not very difficult concepts to explain in a meeting. And um, if you know earned value and you start using these, the, this verbiage and you, you talk about it, that makes you look like an expert and very competent because you will be competent. And then others may see, you know what, this is worth my time to understand this too. Let's Let's do this project-wide so we all have a great way to track the success of our projects. 
So now do you have a little bit more confidence reporting on your project budget? It comes down to estimating costs, knowing that you're confident in, the, in those costs, determining your risk reserves, and then when you can spend that money based on when the money is going to be coming in, and then simply gathering information. And our next segment, we're going to talk to you about specifically what data to gather. You're probably gathering it already in a project environment, and if you're in that. And then um, what formulas to use in order to really be able to calculate at any point in time, are we getting our money's worth for the work that's being completed? So thank you. If you have any questions at all, please email me at emily at praiseon.com and uh, check out praiseon.com's website because there's all types of quizzes for earned value and all other types of um, videos and instructional content that you can, that you can take a look at. Thank you very much.